Hey guys, Dan the Man here. Today we're going to talk about battle rifles. The AR-15 Colt M4. Um, one of the favorites. You can see why people would choose that. But we'll go over some of the attributes of it. To decide which battle rifle we want to take with us into zombie combat. And the AK-47, uh, another excellent battle rifle. Got a red dot on this guy, makes it almost effortless. Uh, and also AK-74 style muzzle brake, but uh, another excellent, excellent battle rifle um, we'll take a look at both and decide which one is best for you hi hey, what's up guys Dan the man um, talking about battle rifles um, see a lot of videos about them uh, most people are talking about for shit hit the fan or uh, without rule of law and uh, I've taken it down to the two finalists in my book, and you can decide for yourself. Uh, we'll go through a couple of those, explain some of the attributes. Um, really, I can't see going against either one of these. Um, this, you know what that is. That's the uh, Colt M4 AR-15. 5.56. Um, as far as the AR goes, um, personally, I carried the older version of the M16 in the military. Um, I, I had my problems with it. I won't lie to you, man. Um, I had my issues. Um, I ended up having several different models, uh, and each time I had a problem with one, it kind of it adds up to your overall impression of the weapon. All in all... I like the weapon. This one's never failed me. So, of course, the newer M4 version. Uh, the M4 feed ramps made a big difference. I, I had some jamming with my M16. Uh, I had a, uh, one of my uh, the gas tube cracked on one of mine. These were military issued, and so uh, and I also would talk a little bit about maintenance. I mean, you, you're not going to fire thousands of rounds through these without cleaning them. And if you're in a shit hits the fan scenario uh, and you're running and gunning or you're, you're out in the bush or even just day-to-day -day use where you're carrying it, um, these guys need to be cleaned. Um, they really do. Um, uh, in fact, I remember when I was in the military, um, we were required to clean three times after each firing. And that was a result of uh, Vietnam where they had jamming issues and... Uh, a lot of problems. These are, you know, they're made tight. They're tight tolerances. They're, they're precision. Um, but I'll go through some of the attributes of this. Uh, number one, plentiful. Right now, ammo is plentiful. But if you remember when the gun grab happened, uh, it became difficult to find 5.56. And it became somewhat difficult to find 2.23. Um, we'll talk about my other partner over here in a minute. But uh, as far as parts, there are millions of these. I find them to be, of course, a lot more expensive to maintain. Uh, they are also, I would say, more accurate than the AK-47. So you get you get the edge in accuracy, no doubt, um, and and you get the edge in uh, you know long range. Uh, with this, I'm comfortable from three, four hundred meters with iron sights. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Uh, and we'll talk about the AK is a little less, uh, but what are you going to use it for? What's the, what's the, you know, are you going to be taking shots from a thousand meters or are you just defending a home or a space around you? That's where you're going to be taking 50 to hundred meter shots. Now, good round. I, I find it a little bit light, uh, the round itself, but it, it, it's got enough power and man stopping power. So I guess the attribute to this, uh, there are plenty of them. There are parts available. There's a lot of options uh, for you know grips, and this is all Knight's Armament, whatever you like. Uh, uh, 
can get drums for them, many, pretty much as many rounds as you want to put in them. You can shoot two, two, three out of them, which is convenient. Uh, and, and again, you know, solid reliability as long as you maintain it. Um, I would say you wouldn't want to shoot more than a couple few hundred rounds out of this before it, it has to be clean. Or you're going to start getting, I believe, you're going to start getting some, uh, you might have some issues. Um, also, the lubrication needed in these, they, they need to be lubed properly to work properly. You can feel the difference when they're, when they're drying out and a couple drops makes all the difference. So, again, lots of attributes, uh, lots of reasons why you might choose that. And, and I have one, so, you know, I, I chose it for some reason. Uh, which is better? We'll talk about that. So, next is the AK-47. I got a red dot on this. It's not needed. Uh, I put it on there because it makes it pretty much brainless. And I like to I like to go out and this is my shooter. I shoot this in the desert more than any rifle I've got because it's just so much fun, man. Uh, this is a Wasser 10. This is the cheapest one you're going to find. But if you know how to work on guns, you can make them into really nice functional machines. Uh, I've never, not once, had a malfunction since I've cleaned it and fixed it up. Um, you can see a lot of them are rough. This guy, this guy's glass, okay? And they've all been safety checked, nothing in them. Um, all I did really was I uh, worked through the inside of that, did refinish the wood, got the actual original Bakelite uh, grip on there and some original steel magazines for it. Uh, installed that uh, AK-74 style muzzle brake. And, we didn't talk that much about the recoil on the AR-15. There really is none, if you ask me. With that muzzle brake on this thing, there really isn't much to worry about on this either. Um, the advantages of this guy, um, you want to talk about a weapon that's worldwide. Everybody who wants to kill us has one of these. Uh, and, and they are just uh, functional. I, I clean all my weapons. I'm pretty religious about cleaning my weapons. If you have the chance, you always want to do that, but I also know that I could shoot this for ages. It's just the tolerances aren't as tight. It, dirt doesn't seem to bother it. It's just in a shit hits the fan situation where you're running and gunning, you're not going to have to worry about maintenance that much. In fact, a lot of times you can pull the pieces out like that, wipe them down, and you're good to go. This thing doesn't care. I, you can feel it when you shoot it. It doesn't care if there's oil in it, no oil, dirt, sand, it just doesn't care. So for shit hits the fan, for me, I like the reliability of this when you consider how much maintenance it's going to take, which is pretty much close to, not close to nothing, but not much. Um, very comparable in the amount of rounds you carry per mag. You can get the same type of drums for it. Uh, I would say there's more parts for these and cheaper than the AR. And the ammo is the other thing. Um, for decent ammo, now that's a Colt. I like to shoot good stuff out of it, but I'll shoot I'll shoot steel out of it. It needs to shoot whatever's available, or I don't want it. Um, and I've shot, you know, crappy Tula ammo out of it. Uh, it, it eats it up fine. B both of these do. So, uh, but the price difference, you know, say 40 cents a round for the the 556, five, and I can pick up a thousand rounds of this stuff. It averages out at 25 cents a round. So, I mean, you're close to double the price to shoot the AR, and that's why I shoot this so much. It, it, ammo is worldwide. It's made by everybody in the world, and uh, you can even buy the old surplus stuff that, that works fine. Again, I've never had this thing hiccup. Um, now, what you lose with those loose tolerances we talked about is some accuracy, but this thing up to about 120, 120 meters, <laughs> with this, uh, this is a, just a leaper's red dot, it's pretty hard to miss, man. 120, even up to 150, hard to miss. Now at 2, 250, you start bullet starts dropping. It's a much heavier bullet, uh, and and you're going to have to adjust quite a bit more. And you're going to have as it heats up, it also those groups will open up. But so does my AR. Opens up a little bit as it gets hotter. This guy gets hotter a lot quicker because of the gas system. Um, the AR runs a little cooler, I would say, uh, and, and the accuracy is the big difference between the two. The reliability being favoring this guy, the, the accuracy favoring the AR. So um, with this again, you got a bigger round, close range, a hard hitting round. Uh, parts are worldwide, ammo is super cheap. Reliability, unmatched if you ask me, unmatched. 
So when you're thinking about a shit hits the fan scenario, you know, are you thinking about driving a Cadillac, which I consider that AR, or are you thinking about uh, grabbing your four-wheel drive, you know, your four-wheel drive truck and pounding through the desert? Here's your four-wheel drive truck, there's your Cadillac or your Porsche. Now, everybody likes to have the Porsche, especially in America, because it's a, a status symbol. But you got one of these, you're going to be just fine. Um, so you decide. For me, it's this guy. Um, I don't anticipate taking a lot of long shots if I have to, if I have to, you know, bug out and go down and, and find water. Um, this guy with a single point sling, uh, point and shoot. Um, this other guy here. Uh, if I had to reach out and touch somebody a little further out, if ammo wasn't an issue, and uh, you know. I had the time to maintain it. It's definitely the sports car of the two. But sometimes, sometimes you just need a truck. <laughs> so for me, shit hits the fan. As everybody knows, it's going to be this guy. And the other thing, you know, the last thing about this is you can hand this thing to some 15-year-old numbskull, and he can probably defend himself with it. Thanks. Fire. Got him. Hit, hit, get it, got it, got it. Um, I had some arguments, not arguments, I had some comments that were made about shotgun this, shotgun that, Shot, shotguns are great, man. Shotguns are, home defense are great, but if you ever tried to shoot something from 30 or 50 meters, even with double lot buck, you're going to have to shoot slugs to have a chance to get out that far. And there, there may be times when you need to pin someone down, when you need to maybe shoot through the door of a car. That's what this guy does. Uh, so, so while I do like shotguns for home defense, for shit hit the fan, um, they're good in, in certain situations. I don't see them as the best for shit hit the fan. Um, just, uh, I guess you got to think about what you want to use them for. If you're hunting birds, you want a shotgun. If you're having to shoot at people, you might want one of these a little better. So you decide. You know what I like. Stan the man. Aloha.